And I'm not muted on my channel. Because of course I'm not. No, I can hear the feedback. Oh, I always forget something. Welcome everyone! Welcome to Discussing Tabletop, episode 46 for September 16th, 2017. It's another wonderful Saturday with plenty of topics to talk about. Uh, welcome to, uh, of course, Joe, my co-host, who's always wonderful and most of the time joining me, like 99% of the time. Uh, welcome to our returning guest of Audrey and our new guest of uh, MJ. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, as usual, you can uh, support yourself in anything you want to at the end of the show. Um, but why don't we dive into this week's topics. Uh, and of course, Audrey and MJ dressed up a little bit for us because they're really nice. <laughs> Much more than myself, who I just put my hair back, you know, so I kind of feel like... I don't know, <laughs> you know? I can, I don't know what you're talking well, about. I don't know, yeah, I, I woke up. I can do right? this and show off Audrey, my ponytail. You... <laughs> yeah, I just, I just sort of like, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Uh, these are, this is my natural eye color. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> totally, I rolled out of bed and like, this is what happened. <laughs> yeah, it happens every day. <laughs> All right, so... We have a great list of topics to talk about today, though. Um, I want to start with uh, Ixalan spoilers. We've hit on them a little bit so far in the show, but it's really close, and most of them are out, so I do want to talk about them, and maybe a little bit about what we're thinking about the storyline as it's shaping up. Uh, they spoiled Iconic Masters, and it's looking like an interesting collection of stuff for that, so I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Because both uh, MJ and Audrey were at the uh, art show, I wanted to talk about them with what they think the legacy of it, the kind of future, and what's going on, what they think with Vegas a little bit too, because we are already getting another Vegas next year rather than in two years. So, I know, right? Yeah, it's kind Pretty of much. odd. Like, here, just take my money. <laughs> I think it's really what it is. Um, <laughs> then, of course, the new Arthur Arcana for D&D &D came out, which was a sub race and another race. That's cool. I want to yeah. talk about the anti-heroes handbook for Pathfinder, because now you can be Batman or some other kind of vigilante. Well, you could be a vigilante before, but now it's more... Official? Yeah, it's, now it's more official. Um, there is a free game slash book on Dragons Conquer America to ramp up for its Kickstarter. And yeah. I've looked over it a little bit. Uh, I, I just don't... download it, actually. I know, I saw it. It's like, it's, ooh, it's, it's a free download now. We'll talk about yep. it. Um, and then I'm going to end up with Whitehall Mysteries because I want to, for one thing, continue to my complaints that I had about uh, four months ago when, like, every week was another Sherlock Holmes or uh, Jack the Ripper game, board game or card game coming out. So it's why. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not Sherlock Holmes the sequel. <laughs> At least that was different. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> At least it had cats. At least, okay. No, it had and cats. cats always show up in the stream, because, for whatever reason. I got one. <laughs> right here. Stream, my stream cat will some, probably show up as soon as I, like, least expect it. All of a sudden be, meow, thump. Um, and, cl and claw your thighs out. And claw my thighs out, because that's what she does best. Um, and then we'll end, of course, with our two normal uh, segments. Stories from the table, where people share some okay. stories from their gaming tables. And gaming sage advice, where we... Answer questions that either the chat has or we have that helps out the gaming community as a whole. Because, hey, we're nice that way. Let's just start off with the initial topic, though, of diving into Ixalan. Spoilers and story. So, I, I have had a chance to look over some of the things. I mean, we just saw uh, Vraska get mm -hmm. spoiled, which was something that I thought was really cool. I was wondering if they were going to actually show her in this one or wait i was curious about that right let's go and um i mean i do like we were talking a little bit about like last week the entire setting of it and mm -hmm. i do think the setting is very cool but like mm -hmm. there's just something about the storyline too that we have like a lost relic on a continent you have the empire that's been living there the like native merfolk who are kind of hiding there conquistador mm -hmm. vampires that are invading uh, yeah. pirates, apparently with one led by the planeswalker Vraska who's shown up, and then Jace getting thrown into the mist because he wanders off after getting his butt whooped by Bolas, so he's like, right. well, this Sounds is... Sounds very jace -ly. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of, um, just, you know, like, we'll take a little bit of, we'll take that, and that, you know, and yeah. some of that. It, well, and I, 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 I think as we said, it's, it's, 
someone took the game of Smash Up and was like, you know, pirate dinosaurs. <laughs> there I we go. I yes, like, I said I that. Like my initial impression, um, and I, I don't know if this is a, a popular opinion, but I, I feel, um, I feel very much like the uh, role play and tabletop market is very full of uh, pirates and dinosaurs right now, because um, we just came out of uh, like a. It's uh, the last set in Hearthstone was a uh, journey to Inforo, and then now we've got the pirates and dinosaurs in Schult, and now we've got uh, all this going yeah. in Ixalan. And I think I think it's kind of fun. I, I like all of it. Well, this like dinosaurs conquer America thing too was like I was looking at the art and like <laughs> I think there were some some similarities there maybe in like art inspiration. I mean. Yeah. You know, with Ixalan, and so, so, I mean, that's interesting. It's always interesting to see like gaming trends, and like I like maybe it's just in like Audrey, like maybe that's the yeah. you know. It's, well, the, it's, oh, the new, okay. it's the new like there was a vampire era. There was right. a right. Uh, what was the last era? There was probably zombies somewhere too. <laughs> fantasy eras, because I I like oh, fantasy like, eras. Yeah, I'm not steam, as bad at steampunk. Good as... Steampunk. You know, steampunk. Yeah, yeah right. steampunk. You know, robots. Yeah. Um, I. I I saw something on Twitter and someone, some dude was like, you know, it's like Twilight, <laughs> Twilight and Pirates of the Caribbean and <laughs> Jurassic Park and like, you know, all of these <laughs> of movies, which I mean, I think like can be really fun, you know, I mean, or it, it could be like really awkward. So like, I mean, what did you guys think like of, of how, you know, how like, I, they pulled it off? I or just have to comment, no Twilight. Vampires don't sparkle, they do. <laughs> Dude, vampires well, sparkle in the cool moonlight and they always have. You know, but... you know she wrote that whole story based off of a dream that she had? The author. Yeah, I, I unfortunately that? know that. She just like had a dream and they were sparkling and she was like, why, did the, why does their skin sparkle? And like, I'm gonna write this whole, and now I'm a, a millionaire, you know, billionaire. <laughs> Wow, so that whole that whole thing is like the result of some misfiring neurons in Stephanie Meyer's brain while she was sleeping. Yeah, totally. Yep. I mean, like, <laughs> she's, got a, she's got a family. Like, I can empathize. She probably dreams about all kinds of crazy shit. I'm like, you know, I just wish I could make like a billion dollars off of mine, right? Like, how come I? I'm not rolling in the dough yet. You know that that fish that like was in my toilet randomly. <laughs> That's the next new story. <laughs> hey, hey. I have some weird dreams. That's all I'm that, the, bo the board game I've been working on actually came to me in a dream. So there you go. If I could actually finish it and get it out there. Yeah. Yeah, there I, you I, go. I have, an unfinished, idea. I have an unfinished musical that came to me in a dream that I still have to finish at some point. <laughs> okay, so we'll all finish the things. Uh -huh. and and we'll all get, we'll all get rich. And then, and then we'll come back here with, like, monocles and top hats on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever I we're drinking, that. it'll be like fancy goblets. They'll be like, yes, yes, we've returned yeah. just because yes, we feel yes, that my... it is necessary for us to continue to share ourselves with you. Yes. yes. My world, my world, my award winning media creation called The Third Time I Went to Seventh Grade. <laughs> and then June, the month of June went on for 45 days. <laughs> Sorry. That sounds kind of like Groundhog's Day. <laughs> uh, but anyway oh, i don't know i feel like people have thought like that the set you know is you know looking like it's a lot of fun so far like overall reception seems good yeah. but i don't know if you guys have seen anything else or like yeah. um, i think it looks interesting oh sorry oh okay, mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I'm so bad at streams. I interrupt people all the time. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's 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 the matter of trying to like figure out the the turn order sometimes and stuff too. And yeah, and but, uh, I wanted to hear what you guys wanted to say. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Joe, you were saying something. But I, I was just saying I think it looks interesting. Um, mm -hmm. and pirates make everything better. Yeah, I like the oh, yeah. I like the double flip cards, the colored ones that seem to like sort of be telling a story. I also like that all like the flip cards are lands on the other side. That's kind of weird, but interesting. Mm-hmm. You know. I think, and I think that was probably like to, you know, articulate the whole, you know, explorer theme, mm -hmm. right? So it's like you do something and then it's like, oh, you know, here's, you know, a, someplace I haven't been before or whatever, you know, yeah. kind of like 
um, articulate the journey aspect, I guess, and, yeah. you know, a card yeah, design. And some, of, some of it's like, you know, like pirate treasure. It's like, oh, you find this island and you find buried treasure here. Mm -hmm. and this is what you get. Yep. Yeah. What fleet are you, Joe? Uh, I don't know enough about the new set yet. <laughs> I have to do more uh, research. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just assumed you were a pirate. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I want to hear what fleet. I'm kind of excited <laughs> about the merfolk, personally. Uh, They're like, the, just that I like my art. I've had them, in, I like the way they look. I have enjoyed playing merfolk decks in the past. Um, I look forward to seeing what's going on, gonna go on with that in that set. My, my my uh, merfolk deck will definitely see being seeing some edits here you know that's the yeah. other thing about it. it it only had yeah. a splash of green now it might have a few more green colors in it you know just... which ones are you which ones do you have your eye on uh copla would work very well in there just because mm -hmm. it's easier to cast um yeah you know that yeah, was, that's... That, that was that like are... the first one i saw uh the deep root waters because that's extra merfolk and especially mm -hmm. because i have the low mage mentor in there just in case you need that one there um and uh i forget uh, i should know it because i just talked about it the other day on one of my videos the uh one that you can tap merfolk to mill a card because extra merfolk then you know and and plenty of some in the school because some in the school you know i'm very legacy so you know that's my merfolk okay. deck white white blue legacy with a splash of green just so that i can have uh some extra uh like mana ramp and stuff in there because i'm a jerk that way <laughs> That sounds mean, but to each their own. <laughs> <laughs> My decks are well meticulated and quite mean, so I can't say that they aren't. It's I, I hope um I hope that this this is gonna sound really silly, but I really like to draft, and I really like drafting tribal decks. Mm -hmm. So yeah. because there seems to be a lot of like interesting tribal elements in this upcoming set, I hope that like I'll be able to pull off some kind of stupid stupid tribal deck. I had a lot of fun in Amonkhet with the the zombies and such. Are so, so are you hoping for Merfolk then? I mean like is that what you yeah, would I like a little bit in my soul. Okay. <laughs> but it's probably not gonna work. Like I'm be bad at what my ideas for like to be honest, my my first interaction with a set is usually a total failure and then I have to like look online and be like, okay, what did other people think was a good idea? Right. Sure, sure. sure. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I don't even try. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I, are you going to cosplay any merfolk by any chance? Um, well, I sure like body paint, but I also got to think about it. We like that you like body paint, too. <laughs> <laughs> I really have to, like, I'm, as far as cosplay plans go, they're really far up in the air. I know um, yeah. we, we were talking about, like, stuff for um, Dominaria and things like that. Um yeah. I'm excited to do Phage. Um, but I really I really have to sort of look at what I want to do new cuz I've been yeah, I've been yeah. doing a lot of repeats recently. Um, I went to PAX and I just kind of I, I I flew under the radar. I didn't I didn't post or talk to anybody really, but oh man. It's going to Yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to Phage. I mean, we'll have to come back and do like another, you know, uh, Dominari is not on the docket like today, but like for other stuff. Cause like, yeah, she's going to cosplay Phage and we've got all kinds of stuff planned for that. So, um, what I mean, that's that? kind of jumping ahead. I think, um, yeah. I think the current, with the current set, I really have to look, I think if I do anything, I'll probably be like a, like a, just like a random card or creature card yeah, or um, sure. something that yeah. I just not like a name, to look of. Not a name. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I'm I'm always focusing on those main characters and legendary creatures, but you know it's kind of fun sometimes to just be like, oh, I'm like I'm this jank like common that yeah, people, yeah. <laughs> people like, use. Well, often. Some, I mean, some of them have great art, right? And then and you yeah. see them a, you see them a lot. I mean, some of them end up getting played, but they're not like named, you know, characters. I, I, I want to yeah, see they're, someone they're like that one yeah, garbage do. creature you grab at the end of every. Uh, like, because they're yeah. cooler. <laughs> I want to see someone uh, cosplay as Werebear because he has the best quote ever. You have the right to bear arms. <laughs> oh, hi. Uh-oh. Hi. Hi, Aurora. Say hi to everybody. 
Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> please say hi. Hi, Aurora. Can you get your... Wait, no, please, no. Get properly dressed. No. Your, 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 your dress is partially off. You're so cute. Fix your dress, and then you can get back in. I want to do this off. Okay, I'll be right there. Okay, Joe, well, continue um... the conversation for a minute while I take care of this. Okay. I was just going to say, um, uh, Kapala is a Magali Villeneuve piece, and like we do have a friend that's actually planning to cosplay oh, him. I hope it's okay that I talk about it. Oh, but, yeah. And, I mean, I um, hope it is. It looks great. She did a makeup test, and it's so cool. No, 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 did, she, no. oh, did she already do the makeup test? I thought I saw it. Like, that was Angel, right? Okay. Oh, no, that was that was for Dominaria. Oh, for oh, that was, okay. Aaron, okay, Aaron. I'm just going to say it. Aaron? Aaron. Okay, she Aaron didn't do art stuff. Time. She's gonna do a merfolk from. I think she's gonna be at Canadian Nationals. So if anyone's like from Canada, like you guys will get to see it. I think she's doing Paula. Hope that was okay to say, Aaron. <laughs> but it's gonna be gorgeous. I mean, the art is amazing. I just love it. I mean, the only thing that I would like more about like Magali's art is if. She had some traditional paintings, I guess, so I could like try to buy one, even though I'd probably be like way priced out, you know, because she works digitally. But, you know, if there was an oil painting or something, I would, you know, I would try maybe take out a second mortgage for <laughs> sell my car. <laughs> well, yeah. that, that's what Matt and I have been commenting on with Magic for like the last year is they've art. really stepped up the art game. The art yeah. on the cards now yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, I don't know if you guys saw that um, Vraska is is up for auction right now um, on eBay. So uh, Vraska Relic Seeker is up. Um, by, it's Chris Ron, and it's up on eBay. And I think last time I checked, it was over 4,000 already. Wow. But they're like I don't, I don't eight, that's, eight days left. So pretty. I mean, it, it's probably going to like quadruple or something because it's like there's a whole other a whole other week, you know? Um. For people that are interested in art too, they might not know there's um, an art Facebook group called MTG Art Market, and a lot of the originals for sale go, you know, up there. Um, I just saw Pounce. Um, Pounce is being offered, and I think they're going to have bidding on the uh, the lands by um, the basics by Raúl. So that's something people can check out if they're interested in, you know. Um, I think pounce is being offered at three thousand, so it's like I mean, you know, a lot of people are just like, yeah, wow, aren't in like the income bracket where we can be collectors, <laughs> but if you are saving up for something, like go to MTG Art Market on Facebook because you'll see, no. you know, people. That's where it comes out, like you know, first, and you can also like follow um, follow Mike Lenneman on Twitter. Well, when I become Mike. a high rolling medical professional, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should be buying up paintings like crazy. <laughs> I mean, when that happens, yeah. right now, I'm <laughs> on that little level. <laughs> yeah. So what about the vampire art? Did you guys, was that like a hot or not, do you think? I feel like vampires are always hot. That's just uh, the vampires are interesting <laughs> because they definitely have a different feel to a lot of the vampires and other artwork and i think that's because it's a reflection to the nature that there is the duality of both uh white and black like, like their skin is much paler mm -hmm. yeah you know and yeah. they always seem to have like very dark armor too so it, like they they kind of pop out very interestingly wait mm -hmm. did i hear body paint <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I have like so much white Love body paint because uh, Yes, you can do you can do like every vampire from the set then, you know. <laughs> and blood, lots of blood everywhere. Yes. Blood. <clears throat> On the art, mm -hmm. in the flavor text, in the in the names. I need to like get I need to like really dive into the art and just like pick one cuz I think that I haven't done a nice like creative like random creature cosplay in a while. And, yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just had this yeah, idea. No. <laughs> so anyone down with the vampires? I don't know what tribe I, I would want to, if I was going to pick an alliance. Yeah, that's I the thing. I, like, uh, I, I think if, if we're choosing one of these for the cards I've seen, I probably would s still go merfolk. 
I don't yeah. know. That's a tough one. Just because it's, like, it's it's the one I actually have decks a uh, deck with, you know. So it's sort of like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know though. I the feel the like vampires. Oh, yeah. On my walls say vampire, but my like heart says merfolk. In a, in a <laughs> way, like, like I always end up, I end up like automatically choosing the dark gothy thing. I was like looking at my dishes, and I was like, what kind of like goth freak chose all these dishes and then i was like wait it's me <laughs> <laughs> it's just your aesthetic i'm just gonna you have the up. soul you have the soul of a merfolk <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i have the soul of a merfolk like I, I i mentally identify as like oh i like the ocean and fish oh, and merfolk vampire there needs to be one now I mean, that should be the next that is i want a merfolk vampire commander yeah oh my I god have... if that happens I Listen to you heard me. it here first. Mm -hmm. If if it happens, I swear to God, <laughs> and the ocean and whatever vampires are about, um, <laughs> I will. I'll cosplay as a merfolk. Uh, as it gets most legends with vampires and traveling on the water, yeah. I would still love to do a pirate vampire and go by Bloodbeard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. So good. <laughs> Captain Bloodbeard. <laughs> I mean, like, you could say that, like, the salt water isn't technically, like, isn't it fresh, fresh moving water that vampires can't deal with? No, I mean, they also, they do talk about traveling on ocean, too. It makes them very sick. Um, and we, that's why they normally don't travel between countries that much. Now yeah. I'm just thinking about Soren getting stuck on a boat. In a wall. In a wall. In a wall. <laughs> in a wall. <laughs> it's like he's still in the wall. He's just on the boat now. He's just like. How do we torture Soren more? Let's take the chunk of wall from Innistrad, put him on a boat. It's the Nahiri in the back of my head that's like, how can we fuck up Soren's life? <laughs> Oh, poor it's like Soren. everybody forgot him then. It's sort of like, really? I mean, <laughs> didn't some of you know about him and he was useful to you? You're just going to leave him there just in case you need him? It's like, maybe, we'll find him when we need maybe him. The, maybe the, the, like, environment will change and, like, the the wall that he's on will just get stuck under the ocean. You know how, like, the... Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to climate change, change <laughs> on it. Oh. Soren's just like, hey... I, I, a barnacle I, goes on his nose. <laughs> okay, uh, Joe, I, why don't you move us on to Iconic Masters a bit? I'll say my opinion when I get back. I'm being called upon, so I'll be right okay. back. I'll let one of you ladies take control on that, because I'm not up to date on my magic as you guys are. So, uh, What? I don't even game. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, iconic masters well the big thing for on that for me was like the art you know because it was like reprints and a lot of new art um i you know i'm glad like that it made some you know staples more affordable for people i guess a little bit you know um, it's always a good thing about reprints yeah sure um and you know everybody's kind of like talked about like their favorite arts you know changes you know from from the old stuff um I thought the the new art for me one some that stood out were the dragons, the Kamigawa dragons art, um, because they they kind of changed they changed the perspective on those a lot because you know how like we were kind of panned back before on all of um, all of those dragons and now they're like they, they like zoomed in right so you can see like a lot of detail, um, and I I like it, um, and I feel like it might be more accessible. Archives to players, but like I gotta say, like I the old dragons like have like a sense a sense of grandeur and um, like that side pan. Yeah, with the what you really <laughs> get the sense of their size, which I think was lost a little bit on on those reprints. But it is it is really great art, and I did see like um, the I think Jugon. I saw Jugon in MTG Art Market. Um, it's a new newer artist, and There's it. One uh, just yeah, to, ahead, yeah. the, since you're saying like yeah. some updates, there's one that yeah, stood out for me. Yeah. Was Orok Champion. I really thought that was a very interesting like update for the way they did that one too. Because it's sort of like, I'm like, you, you think about that, and it's sort of like it's still a reprint, but it also like hints at it's like oh, there's still some like 
normal storyline to this one about what's going on a little bit. So, I mean, that's why it's like some of the, definitely some of the updates are very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one did tie into, because didn't the flavor too on that one? Because it's tying into the fact that like there's still Mirrodins on New Phyrexia, you know. Yes, I yeah, I noticed that one. That's yeah, the flavor text. Yeah. Mirrodin's deepest caverns conceal its brightest hopes. Yeah. So I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Yep. I'm glad you caught that. Like, so that's like taking us back. Like there, like something's going on. Because I mean, I almost feel like maybe in the next year, because we have all the Praetors also being reprinted here. So oh, are that's they like. True. Oh. Are they ramping us up for, like, the uh, return of New Phyrexia in some way or something? You know, we've sort of hinted at it in, like, some of the side sets with, like, you know, that apparently Elish Norn is supposed to be the of de facto ruler of it, but other right. than that, you know. Right. I would really, that would be an interesting plot. I would, I would like to see that. Yeah. Uh, you never well, know what's coming next, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if that's if I mean, yeah, if we that eventually happens, I mean, you know, like someone's gonna have to go back there and deal and with do that something, shit. right? Because it's a mess, right? Oh. I mean, because I mean, it's like, kind of I feel like with the plot, wasn't it? It it sort of ended with the bad guys winning. It did kind of because. So I mean <clears throat> that 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 leaves an opening for another another tension. Yeah. Like, I mean, and that, but between, like, I mean, and then I think it was also hinted at some point that, like, uh, Nicol Bolas was not cool with that. Yeah, like, and Rexia, like, and, like there's cool with something, something kind of antagonistic relationship there. So, like, is the, is is he just gonna let that go or what? Yeah. You know? So that'll be that's gonna be an interesting one. I do like I some of the class that he can't yeah. deal with it, right? Yeah. Like, so I'd like to see how that goes. <clears throat> Like, the, the other two things that stood out when I looked through this set that I thought were very interesting were some of the classics from Unlimited getting a reprint. I still like those when they make a peer, reappearance, like Maha Moti Dijin, you know, it's sort of like, oh, you know, hi there. And yeah. I liked, I really like the new art on the Spirit Dragons. Mm -hmm. You do like those? Do you I like, like it better? We were kind of talking about that. Do you like yeah. that? Debate now. Debate! <sighs> well, uh, you know, Debate. it's like... Like, I don't know, because it's like, I don't have as much of the, you know, that was during my time period where I was technically sort of like off from magic. So I didn't have the direct firsthand experience with them to begin with. So it's sort of like, yeah. when we talk about it now, it's sort of like, well, I think they look neat, but does that mean like, they're better? I don't yeah. know. I, I, I can see the argument about the fact you can't see it, the si sheer size difference. Mm -hmm. But I I like the close up because you get a lot more of the detail of it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, detail's I, good. Yeah. In general, it's good to give people choices. You know, I mean, like mm -hmm. I sure. And I don't know. Maybe I'll end up with with like both. <laughs> hey, know? now we can pull out channel again, just in case you want to. I I is there? Wait, give me a second here. Channel. Now you can channel fireball again. Yeah. You can channel Fireball again. I don't think yeah. you can do it first turn, but you can channel Fireball. I mean, they got it out there. Channel. I actually had channel on my on my cosplay list, that the Gwei one for a long time, because <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like a curtain basically. You know, Audrey how she's like just wearing the curtain, and like <laughs> then her her arm is like it's just like leaves on the arm, and I was like, I can just do so that. good. I was yeah. like, <laughs> I'm gonna go out and just lie in my yard. To, like window drapery on me, <laughs> like yeah, the, those on are a windy day. Ones. You're like, I just pick up a piece of cloth. <laughs> yeah, my body. So, I'm gonna like go and like find a pile of leaves that somebody raked up and just like <laughs> jump into it. <laughs> See, those are the and, things. Someone take a picture of like a camera, and then channel. you just have like a, an elaborate shoot, and then you just post it on like Instagram or something, and you're like, yeah. Oh, and, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those, those ones always make me laugh because you're because they tend to get what what always makes me laugh about those kinds of shoots is that like they get a lot of attention like when you do it nicely. But oh then yeah, you're like I got a curtain and I laid around in some leaves. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> because I mean sometimes like it's it's just what entertains people you know at that moment, right? Yeah. 
that determines basically like how much you know response your traction you get so sometimes yeah, yeah. the simplest like or funniest things you know not necessarily what you put the most time into mm -hmm. you know i would yeah. uh, on this well, this isn't you know in one of my other uh channels where i would do art and comics for a, a different fandom i i found it was funniest because i would i would sometimes post pictures of like food that i made and the food pictures would just be so so much more popular oh, yeah. than my like lovingly crafted comics and pictures like i'd be like oh yeah, yeah. Blah, blah. and then i'd be like guess what i made shish kebabs in this right. game people eat shish kebabs sometimes <laughs> and then it'd be like a thousand reblogs and i'd be like no, it's totally Whatever. just like nobody nobody cares about like the art you poured your soul into. They're like, here's a plate of fries, or like, here's a selfie I took this morning, you know, where I'm like, hmm. <laughs> hey, look, we went to Taco Bell. <laughs> right, exactly. The Taco yes. Bell saga was so was so like, well like button <laughs> <laughs> the, the the Taco Bell saga. I it's like I'm like what? <laughs> it's like it's like <laughs> it's like interesting, but I guess it's like there's something about the popularity of it, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, just, it's relatable. Everybody loves Taco Bell. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the fun thing about you know, like, populist internet. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. So what about so Thought Seize came back with oh. the, but Wait, with what? the lore Lorwyn, the fairy, yes. who I love. I love that. I I always like that art too. Yeah. I, think. I don't like Thought Seize. Can it go back to where it came from? Oh, I sacrilege. I, I like to just... play combo decks, and it can just it can go <laughs> get wrecked for all I care. <laughs> I for once enjoy thought sees. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, like the other ones that I think are sta standouts for me, though, just uh, like Blade Wings art looks so much better than his original. I'm sorry, his originally just sort of like, I'm kind of a dragon, which I guess oh. wasn't bad. But yeah. now he's kind of got like epic pose, I guess, a little bit more. Er, I'm kind of a dragon with an epic pose. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, come on, we can get a little more epic pose. Thank you very much. Everyone a, needs an epic power, pose. He went to a power a power stance seminar, you know. Yeah, and and I I I'm enjoying the fact that Jungle Barrier's back because I can remember actually playing with that because I had a bunch of them. <laughs> oh, Jungle Barrier. I hey, Jungle Barrier is good. It was from. But it a doesn't beat Wall of Ice. Come on, it's Apocalypse. It's funny. I'm sorry, but as as um as someone who cares very much about the jungle, I would have to disagree with your sentiments. <laughs> about, uh, it is a two six defender, and it totally you draw a card when you get it. So I mean that's an advantage. It's pretty good for just a random piece of jungle. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, it will passively mess up. <laughs> Anything with power to bless. I mean, uh -huh. that's kind of great, right? Yeah, it's just going to be like, it's like, huh, there's seriously just some jungle here. And all of a sudden, ah! Hi, I am a little one one. Oh, the, the jungle just ate me. Okay. Yeah, it's like, it's like your goblin wanders into the jungle and it never is seen from again. Yeah, I, I like that. That's good. Uh, In well, the jungle, the mighty fun. jungle. Uh, yes. All right. The goblin gets first? eaten tonight. Mm hmm. Thanks. So, so I iconic, like, iconic masters is looking definitely interesting, and I do like it. It, it looks like the updated art is also like, um, I guess we're saying uh, for the most part, I'm saying it, it sounds like we think it's pretty cool. The updated art, I think so. It seemed like people were pretty excited about it. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think that there's something to be said for like whether you like the old art or the new art. I like having multiple arts for different um. Yes. Different, different decks. Mm -hmm. like different, um, yeah. This is, I mean, from a cosplayer perspective, I like it because you, you know, everybody has sometimes similar favorite cards. And so you can be like, well, well, well I'll do this version. I still want to see yeah, someone cosplay as uh, a Anime Sandra from the oh Japanese Sandra vs. Jace. I should, totally, I should totally look into that because, I don't know. Uh, I got that, the Japanese Sandra vs. Jace. Just because it was like, this is the most interesting thing. <laughs> oh, I, I love that. It's Maybe like anime and MTG, but you know, if you go, um, I think have to look at Christine again. actually did that um, a long time ago, like when it first came out. Um, Christine Spray did the anime Chandra. If you go, um, I think it's on her Deviant Art. I think um, it was one of like the earliest pictures I saw of her. Yeah, I actually saw that first too because I you remember that 
more, I was more, I, for a long time, I was more weeb than gamer. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was cute. We should bring it back, though. And, like, hey, the anime hey, is, I found the perfect, the perfect ground in the middle of it. I have that once a week I review she for anime so series different. and say how to use them in you a know, role-playing game. You know, I, I feel like I should do that. I feel like that's the, the Chandra that, like, maybe I'll someday be. Yes. I, I'm always wondering if... There's so many beautiful, beautiful Chandras in the world. Audrey, let's do that. We should go to, like... Let's go to like an anime convention. Anime Jason Chandra. No, yeah, or... let's go to like an anime convention with like a, a group of like anime planeswalkers. Yeah, because they did huh? make they did make them. That would be fun. And no. I I would like to see more. I mean, I mean Sakura Khan. Mm -hmm. It's always mm -hmm. my home. And okay. and, and we can do that. <laughs> totally, totally have the uh, Magic the Gathering anime. Then it's the perfect thing. Wizards, get I, on that. I would watch that. They uh -huh. should make it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they made that. That'll give me the. I can do like the kimono Liliana uh -huh. thing. <gasps> yes, we can tag your bow in the front uh -huh. and have like the nice like shoulder uh -huh. things. I mean, you don't have to tie your bow in the front. That's a statement that that you can make yourself. <laughs> you what? <laughs> oh, um, you can decide whether you want to tie your bow in the front or the back. Or the front. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's just like a, a mid '90s anime. Like I know what its meaning is culturally, and so it's a little awkward. But like, what, what was the meaning? Mid '90s of? like anime like image. Oh, the it, it's like kind of it's kind of weird. But like, because uh, I know like with the kimono, like I mean it's it's like basically like, um, like the kimono, like it's like a how do you wear it? It's like a sartorial like articulation of all of these right like rules it's, yeah, it's basically like social then, statements yeah and Oof. so the, the bow in the front is actually it's a uh, it, well, back in the day certain ladies right. of a certain profession oh, okay, um, would wear it in the front because it was easier to tie and untie but I, like I see that yeah and but I, I totally get it these anime always had the sexy fem like female yeah the female sexy character with like a short, um, with a with short kimono with a bow tied in the front. And like, yeah. you know, I remember being a kid and just being like, oh, it looks so pretty in the, t in the front because you have like this big fun bow. And then I like, like somebody right, told me right. that and my mom was like, nope, nope, you can't do that. <laughs> the things that get lost. No, I used to hear that from, from my mom who's um, half Japanese. There was, you know, um, it's like the neck tattoos too. Yeah, like yeah. The back the neck is very, of the neck. Very and like, you know how that got really popular for a while, like here in the States? So you'd see just, oh, like random girls walking around and they had the, the tattoo back there. And I was like, it's, they probably didn't know. And it's okay. Like, it's totally cool now. Like, you know, because we're going to get away from all that anyway. But it's interesting how, like, how those yeah. historical contexts, like, just get lost. And sometimes, sometimes they had, you know, really, really big meaning you know but like we I don't mean, know. it's funny because cultural ideas like from different countries we all have different things that we think are scandalous like i still don't like i feel uncomfortable wearing showing my shoulders because i lived in japan right. for two years and over there that's right. like, <gasps> like right. you can wear as short a skirt as you want nobody gives a crap like <laughs> it's really funny <laughs> i think i was i was giving um elliot a hard time the other day um i don't know what it was i was saying that i liked it when he wears like when he doesn't wear socks or whatever, I was like, I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna show some ankle, you know? It's like, oh, you're it's amazing, sexy Victorian, like, <laughs> well, you, you scandalous, scandalous man. <laughs> show some more ankle, please. <laughs> uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Bibliophor yeah. Orc, once again for proving me wrong that you know we have the link to, uh, oh. uh, you know. Covered up with the uh, with anime Chandra. In what did Rob do? What did he do? <laughs> um, is Rob causing trouble? No. Biblia or orc? Yep. Settle down. Settle down. <laughs> cause any trouble, even though you're the coolest, and awesomest. I have to. I still have to thank him for those. Those cool pictures. The prints, he. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm gonna frame some of them. Like they're probably the best pictures of my boyfriend and I um, together in one place. You guys are really cute. Us he's, holding. He's a, he's a girl for so cute. Yeah. He's he's great to grab here. Yeah. So yeah. 
he is overall a wonderful person to have around. I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Very he helpful. It's a very pleasant experience. <laughs> very helpful. <laughs> All right. Why don't we, uh, though, move on because we don't want to get too yeah. digressed. I did want to talk oh, a little sorry. bit about. Uh, no, well, that's we. It we, is a little bit of a segment anyway. Vegas, uh, you know, the art show. Uh, a little yeah. bit what we think, what you guys, because you two experienced it, uh, I guess, like, a follow-up for what you experienced into what you think the future is and what you know about what's going on in the future. We'll sort of, like, call it that, you know. Okay, yeah. So, um, GP Vegas gathering sort of grew out of um, our first gathering, which was Grand Prix Portland a couple years ago, which was just me basically saying, hey, who wants to do this? And it turns out, like, all these cool people, like, who I really don't deserve to have as friends <laughs> were like, I, I second that, that with you. He'll do that with you. And I was like, okay, that's great. So then we 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 did Portland. Then we remet in Vegas. So and luckily, um, my friends um, Mike Litteman and like Rico Evangelo who, of Cardamom Jigs and like Josh Krause of like original MTG art were putting on the Magic Art Show, right? Where they were bringing original art to Vegas for the first ever Magic like gallery show. And that just happened to coincide with, you know, our GP Vegas uh, second, <laughs> second Planeswalker Summit. So we just, you know, that was nice because they wanted to feature cosplayers and they knew what we'd done in Portland. And so they reached out to me and were like, can, can you, you know, be a part of our, um, Kickstarter and, and you know, maybe bring um, cosplay to, you know, the art show. And I said, yeah, sure. So luckily that just happened to like coincide and like work out on both sides. Um, so that's how that happened. And we, we really appreciate like everyone on Twitter and Facebook and like just anyone who, you know, retweeted or donated to the Kickstarter. That was really amazing because I mean, it was a successful show and it was like the first of its kind. So we really made history and like, so, so everyone who helped us promote that, you know, you were a part of making, you know, magic history. Um, and we really appreciate your support of the arts and cosplay. And yeah, exactly. Part of the way. I'll just, I'll just stand here making so, little um, my hand. I was just, I was just thanking everyone, um, Tantus for their like support of the art show. Cause yeah. it was, just so you know so you got good. like you guys came there out there was some very nice tokens like, i got for throwing some money into it. yeah yeah um rico's really good you know cardamom jigs is great about you know <laughs> their product and like you know um so what we're trying to do i i don't know like because i haven't talked to mike that recently is like try think they're trying to reboot it for another event but i don't know which yeah. um we had a great experience i think all of us learned a lot. It was way busier than we thought it would be. Um, I think it GP Seattle. It was, <laughs> yeah, I know. Bring it to GP Seattle. It would be great to have the Northwest. I mean, Audrey and I are both from the Northwest, so come might be biased. Yeah. In two months, come out to the Northeast. Come to Pax Unplugged. Set it up there. They'll they'll love you here. It's five blocks from my house, so I mean, that's a benefit. Basically, if you want an art show, you know, just get on whatever social media platform you use and just yell, just yell at Mike Lineman and Watsy and say, hey, wizards, we want this. You know, hey, Borth, it's Mike. Just, wizards, so. this. just harass the, the okay. hell out of them, right? Is that, our, is that our new plan? Are we going to get some harassment going? That's what I want. I mean, harassment is basically like... I mean, that's in my job description, right? <laughs> Isn't that what Liliana does? Like, that's, yeah, she kind of just harasses people until she gets her way. So, I mean, <laughs> good. I'll just leave bouquets of flowers everywhere. Yes. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet, <laughs> Nissa. I'll just sweet. and just put everything in GP Seattle. It's the best place. Mm -hmm. I'm like, give me another art show or I'll like... Give me another yes. art show or the fines will come. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, well, my next I, card will have black in it. Oh, <laughs> um, I think one thing that we had sort of bantied about was like the idea of having. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the uh, the puzzle rooms from the oh, Innocent You know, like they, they were themed puzzle rooms at like the big, yeah. right? 
uh, oh, retreating the Innis Fraud reveal. And like, uh, so Mike and I had chatted about how it would be cool to have, when, when we have a bigger space, right? Like if they can get a bigger space, have the rooms themed to the, the plane, right? Like decorated in theme with the plane um, that of the art that that room is featuring. And then have the cosplayers have be in that space and sort of have like a little set you know, built in and that yeah, area. They can come and like take pictures and sort of like feel like they're immersed in the world fully. It, exactly, to have like a more immersive experience and like give the fans like a nice backdrop to take photos, you know, um, on that plane and stuff. And like, you still might be. Able to be I wish you like that idea. <laughs> I want that to happen. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I think you know, for people like like you. Um, and, and like when like what, the way Giza and and Geralt were like in character and like role playing, you know, for those of us who like to act while we're in cosplay and really get into the role, like I think that that having those themed rooms would be a good way to leverage that and sort of you know and have sort of like um, a more programmed experience for the fan. Yeah. So that's something that that Mike and I had talked about briefly. So yeah. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Like be the goofy theater person that yeah yeah i mean you know and like that was i you know we'll see i know he busted his ass to get that together and like you know it all depends on what budgets and like what support um can happen so if you want to see it you know people just have to ask and like you know sometimes you know sometimes harassing wizards is just the way to go yeah well and if you can harass if you can harass people with a i got 40 47 million people on the internet that also like this yeah they, People usually yeah. listen to that. Yeah. So. There's yeah, no people online. <laughs> okay. Sorry, cool. I, I got like overexcited about that. Oh no, that's a fine thing to get excited about. <laughs> I'm so, like, I hope that happens. So it was a super. Everyone we saw there was really excited about it. The art, you know, and then like they they seemed to appreciate having the cosplay hosts, and they were just really they were thankful to the whole team. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. What I was told about GP Vegas, and what my impression was as well, uh, this was also my personal impression, was that you know a lot of GPs, they're you know they're a, a event where people get together to play a game, and though like they're kind of they could be considered a, a magic convention because yeah. there's magic fans in one area. I mm -hmm. felt like GP Vegas was like a proper convention in that it had that yeah. content. That you could just like you could just revel in the geekery of magic outside yeah, exactly. of just playing mm -hmm. it. Like I yeah. know that that sounds weird, but but running you could run around and you know get a picture with your favorite character or um, yeah, yeah. have some kind cool. of and and that's the environment that I grew up in in the anime community. Um, yeah. and I just really hope that we can. I hope that like I the game is is always going to be the central element, but I hope that we can bring that kind of warm and it's like holistic artistic holistically yeah. nerdy atmosphere yeah. i really, really yes. like it <laughs> absolutely it, it was it was great they had a lot of features um that i mean i think what what they're probably looking at is finding a balance between like the organized play activities and then like the convention type activities you know and finding like the ideal mix of those things but i mean mm -hmm. there's a lot of great ideas in the community and i'm hoping that some of those will like rise to the top you know and that they will really like harness and leverage some of that energy mm -hmm. that that people just give freely because like we love magic right and yeah. um, I know I want, um, I want cosplay judges. That's, yeah. that's something I've been thinking. Of. Like just Justin and how he always says he when he he's like judge form and cosplay. Yeah, judge form. Sort, I, want yeah, judge him, sort. I want those two to combine. I want like that's an right, event yeah. where all the judges are planeswalkers. And so when you're like, <laughs> I need a judge, it's like Jace or something walking up, being like, mm -hmm. Well, me. That's, that's something fun. I think a couple judges are working on that. Like Justin Ricks is the, he always cosplays Soren. Um, and I think um, there are some other ideas in the pipeline about maybe, you know, doing that kind of thing. So I mean, um, me, and my, me and my boyfriend have been talking about trying to study up and, and take the judges test just because oh, yeah. mean, when you play enough magic, you kind of like he is like him and I and our friend group are always the ones that get asked about questions when there is no one else, like when right. we're not at a store or something. And so I think that like 
I always feel like, oh, I should actually study and become an authority on that. So I'm not just being like, well, I think when I went to the <laughs> game store the other day, this thing is, <laughs> yeah. The but... question is, though, would anyone want to call Giza for a judge call? <laughs> 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 That's a tough question. She is a very fair judge of all things. <laughs> you know, I love you. I love her. I, I'm thinking um, like now yeah. when we're talking about it this way, it, 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 I think that it's might be something. Uh, there might be something to like even just on the local side of a lot of these GPs as if yeah. like maybe we could see more experimentation a lot of these local ones and each of them kind of comes up with their own flavor that might be more interesting too that it like has yeah. more that then, like yeah it's like like a local version of a magic convention that would be yeah. kind of interesting if they could do that a little bit more. i mean that that works out that, that in the anime community i know for a fact that there are different conventions that sort of hang their hats on different um different things that the people that go to them enjoy so mm -hmm. That seems like a totally oh, yeah. cool thing at local GPs. Like, there's, you know, that the... makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, the local flavors, like, might be different than, like, what you, you know, put together on, like, a national basis, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And then one thing we, like, um, our friend Erin had a great idea. She wanted to put together um, a database, as far as cosplay goes, of um, cosplays by, by locality, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that we know, because there are more than you think there are, and, like, I'm just seeing some amazing stuff, you know, now from people, like, all over the country, like, all over the world, and, you know, if we're talking about, you know, localization with GPs, like, maybe, like, having a database would be helpful, because, like, you know, T.O. is, like, I mean, everyone's so busy, like, you're not always going to know, like, you know, who right. can do what, it's, like, do you go to, like, a general modeling site you know what i mean like do you yeah. go on yeah. craigslist and say hey i'm looking for cosplayers in my right. area like i have like a you know a, a smaller budget and like you know i'm looking for someone it's like you might not know about the quality of their stuff their availability so we were thinking about maybe trying to put together that that list by location just to help out with you know for organizers yeah and that would help because i think that one of the biggest things that like kind of cheeses fans off in with cosplayers in a public scenario in a in public convention settings and this is like this is what it is but i know that like you could you know they you go to events and there's somebody dressed up as the character and mm -hmm. like they don't know who the character is like they were just called by some Hired. Hired. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah and and like there's nothing really wrong with that that's just how the world works sometimes yeah but but, like I'm not trying to I'm not trying to to hate or anything, but I know that that is one thing that fans complain about. Like they're like, oh, yeah, I walked yeah. up to my favorite character, and my favorite character didn't even know who they were, and it made me sad. And that happens right, right. sometimes. And so if yeah. you have, you know, you're looking at a cosplayer. Like they didn't they didn't freaking make the costume because, I mean, yeah. they might, like they probably made the costume because they like the character because that's usually how cosplayers. Sure. Are. You know, and if they were, and if they were like hired as a promotional model, like you know, for a convention, they might not know. You know, right. they might have gotten the commission to do it without having knowledge of the game. You know, just like they'll cast like actors who like don't know yeah. anything about the comic. Yeah. But, like yeah. their their movie that they're in, which I think is just weird because I'm like, weren't there enough people who tried out? <laughs> yeah, that like wasn't there love, that totally love this and love right? it? <laughs> that feel it deeply. You know, that would have brought that extra level of love, you know, to the production. So, um, yeah, I, so I think, like, bringing in people from the community, like, just the magic community is, is, like, a good way to go, you know, because we're kind of, you know, we're kind of like a big, happy family, you know, or we could be. We could so, be. We, yeah. There's a lot of us that would really like to be. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think that's good because, you know, when you do have knowledge of the game, then it's sort of, um, what a, it, it's sort of, that argument that like you're just there to be like eye candy, I guess, or like you're just a booth babe is kind of, and we shouldn't, we shouldn't have to like, you know, you know. You don't have to. You should never have to justify but yourself. The fact that yeah. you are like well, a that way, but... you know, the fact that you are a community member or that you do know about magic, with you know, even if you don't play much, if you know about the lore, it, it sort of like takes, you know, 
away from that stereotype, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That you're just being trotted out there as like a way to market to a certain demographic. It's like, no, yeah. they're here because they, they love the game. And then they made this costume and they also yeah. play this game. So I think it, it just makes the discussion, you know, and that whole conversation yeah. like a more, more, you know, educational for people. I guess. Yeah, I think it would it would improve people's assumptions too, because right. I think now and it's changing. It's so changing, and I love that. But like the yeah. first time yeah. I ever I ever cosplayed at a convention, like in a so pseudo professional <clears throat> setting, pretty much everybody in question assumed like I got so many people that yeah. walked up to me that were like, "Oh, you've never played this What's game, have you?" Or like, right. "You don't like you don't even want right. to be here, do you?" And I'm like, right. "Actually, though." I would be here whether I was cosplaying or not. I just thought that this might be fun, and now you're hurting my feelings because, yeah, and pretty much. I, I think I think Wizards does a good job of you know including the cosplayers in you know play events. Yeah, is, and like, I appreciate like in Vegas, you know, we saw like Nadine playing in a whole bunch of events, you know, and stuff, and that was yeah. and that's great because it's like you're in costume, but you're also out there you know, just like any other player, like as part of the crowd. Um, the other thing with the local um, the local database of cosplayers, I think Washington it would help, help you answer the <laughs> 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 um, is that, you know, I've heard a lot of like, we would like to see more, you know, male male well, cosplayers. Shine, you know? Yeah, that's a thing. We'd like, like to see more like, like dude character, right? Are like there's a lot of guys that want to start it, but they don't know where to begin. Right, and like right, and like an organizer, you know, um, a TO might not know like that. Well, there are these guys that cosplay in my area. You yeah, know, they would they would never know because like they're they're just generally not as visible, you know, yeah. and yeah. they don't get as much you know fanfare as um, a lot of you know the women cosplayers. So I think. For you know, having that database of like local cosplayers would help with the uh, what I was saying, um, Tantus was the ma was the demand for like more um, male cosplayers. And, like, oh more yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Become such a it's such a hassle when you're just a when you're just a cosplayer. Like I always have this problem where I'm like I will put on a I will make and or put on a costume for any old event for free, but like I. I cannot be bothered to advertise myself most of the time. It's an like, extra level. Yeah, the self promotion is an extra level. And so, work. like, I feel like the database would be great because yeah. then I would be listed as like free cosplayer. That right, like in the Seattle level. area. So yeah. I'm not like That's... I'm not a professional or anything. Yeah. Um, no, you do great, but you you do great work, Audrey, and so do a lot of people out there. And there are a lot of guys out there getting into cosplay. That I know would show up for events and love to. Um, so yeah, that that might be something we could we continue to work on as far as like the cosplay community goes. Yeah. All right, why don't we though move on because that was a very interesting conversation on that it, the entire subject there. We we really got <laughs> dive, in depth, in dive deep. deep. Like this. I'm always yep. willing to talk about the dynamics of the cosplay yeah. community. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. but moving uh, on, moving on to... though, because we do want to get a little bit more in here. I yes. do want to talk about the Unearthed Arcana, the couple of races for Dungeons & Dragons. Oh, so, okay. Yeah! Mm -hmm. So, um... Yes. Yes, Yankee? If you don't know a lot, Unearthed Arcana is something that D&D, which is still Wizards, so we're still talking about Wizards products, uh, puts <laughs> out... <laughs> on, like, hey, hey, Wizards! ...and hobbies. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, what? Uh, they put out every month, uh, well, they were doing it weekly for, like, a long period of time, but now they're every month just a playtest material that could show up in one of their books and this week was a sub race of elf and a race entirely sub race yep. of elf is the eladrins which are like fey wild elves who have yep. personalities based upon their seasons and yes. are kind of interesting because they can <laughs> teleport and get a, a cantrip where they can change their sh season like it's like I'm shifting season. It doesn't. It doesn't matter the personality. <laughs> They're having giant mood swings. I know. It's like it's um, like it's it's a, it's not dependent on your personality. That's domination of you. You can shift your season to something else as you need it when you rest. What what no, I think is it's yeah, basically you, you have your emo, which is winter. <laughs> 
Um, you're hippie, which is autumn. Right. <laughs> you have um, spring, which is kind of your valley girl. So, like, and summer is just the asshole. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm I'm a little bit concerned for these elves' mental health. Um, have have they have they examined whether it's an adaptive? I think they have some kind of bipolar disorder. I like. Can, do we need to get them on some lithium? Are they okay? And it's after a short or long rest you decide what mood you were basically in. No, I I, I watched that presentation and I was like, whoa! I was like. Sure, okay, they change moods over the seasons. I was like, I change moods like this every month. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> well, that's I changed moods based rest. on you whether say... I've eaten or how uh, much sleep I got or how many uh, times I yeah. had to, I don't know, do any one thing I like. Eat some chocolate. It's like, dude, that elf needs some chocolate now. Get yeah. that elf some chocolate. I, I eat. I eat a. I eat a large cake mm-hmm. all yeah. by myself, and then now I'm in summer again. Yeah, no, no, like, summer I can use firebolt. Pew, pew, pew. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I burned down your whole village. I was just like, it was overheating. I was in my summer. <laughs> I feel like I feel like this is gonna be misused like, I, for the rest of for the rest of like existence. Like there's gonna be that guy at like every convention that's like, yeah, I'm just like a PMSing wizard. Yeah, <laughs> it's because I'm, po- I'm a I'm it's a possible fey elf, and I'm just gonna be like I'm gonna be like. <laughs> I actually, I, I love the can trips too. It re- ranges from friends to firebolt. <laughs> it really it like me, depending on my convention mode. Like if I'm in, if I'm in staff mode, if I'm in right. play well, mode. I so, actually, you were absolutely correct though, because like the hippie season is friends. The like emo season is chill touch. The mm-hmm. valley girl is minor illusion because you don't want to don't want to notice that they're like you know filled with it and of course like the angry <laughs> firebolt because you just want to fire out the you know fire right exactly <laughs> and the minor illusion goes with valley girl too because they always have to look their best oh okay they got yeah. what about valley guys too i guess we can we, we can't be sexist here there's the valley guys too that we know no, we that's, have... that's, that's, that's jason's illusion right that's I'm jason's whole just, i'm just imagining the the male the male blood elves in in world of warcraft the, oh yeah. i need a scrunchie <laughs> <laughs> all their emotes they're really good <laughs> oh. Oh, so i i love how i look into your eyes there they because if i look deeply enough there are two reflections yeah, in my face <laughs> we're like they're they're pretty funny i think they need, need a new magic item which is mood ring for these elves <laughs> good. i like that it would even work with mood rings because mood rings uh they register your temperature yeah so that, that way you know that when you're dealing with the elf how to deal with them hi joe yeah, no, see, and it's that's the perfect. It's like the this is the like Jace's Jace's illusion for Ixalan, right? <laughs> it's like you yeah. just didn't know. You didn't know I was like so ripped, and then I just like, you know, it's like put in some definition here, and like you know, a little bit of you know, you think he can do that, you know, like probably. I'm sure he does it all the time. My delts were looking a little flat, you know. I'm gonna like round that out a little more with an illusion. <laughs> I would if I was Jace. Like, who needs exercise when you can just make yourself instant illusion apps? Then you see him in his true form. He's just like sitting in a recliner, a big beer gut. It's, he look. He look. He would look completely different, right? Like, it's like he might look. We just don't know. We have no idea. We really don't know what he looks like. <laughs> um, <sighs> um, so, just, like speaking of using using things as an excuse. Like, and this is jumping ahead a little bit, so we can go back. But like, for I saw an interesting discussion about um, the Pathfinder anti-hero thing, which was someone just using like being an anti-hero like as an excuse to be like a total dick, like in their play group. We like, dealt with someone the kind of like that. That's so, that. that. so now that 
it's like they put it on a, a forum board and they were like, well, someone in my playgroup was like, I'm an anti-hero wizard, so I'm going to sit down and read my spell book during combat, and do nothing. You know? Dude, that and it is was like, there was a long discussion about like, well, is this really like, does that fall under the auspices of being an anti-hero you know, or not, no. right? And so <laughs> it falls in the auspices of being a jerk and a bad player. I'm sorry, I am I have yeah. very strong opinions about this. Like, yeah. you should build your character in D&D to make a story and interact with other characters. And like, if you are going to be a character that is anti-social or, or like doesn't speak, doesn't do things, like you have to really yeah. either be like a fucking genius on Earth to make interesting for everyone to do it. Or you're just not really thinking about it from the right direction. And like, yeah. I've seen with people that have done really excellent jobs playing antisocial characters. Right. But it took, it takes a lot of like descriptions of what they are thinking and or doing in a way that I don't think is easily accomplished. Okay. I, don't I, I, I think that's what I saw people saying was that you needed to be consistent and you needed to like show that you're putting the effort in otherwise like they were like no that person's just being lazy and like yeah, yeah. yeah. well you you need to be playing in order to to be part of the adventure like the idea of D, the basis of the whole game is you are adventurers going on an adventure and so if you pick a character that's basically i would never be on an adventure and i'm not an adventurer like yeah, yeah. it's kind of like the difference between like somebody who just straight up stays home and like Frodo Baggins, like Frodo Baggins eventually decides, I'm gonna leave my, I'm gonna leave the show, or, or not Frodo. I said Frodo when I meant Bilbo. And I <laughs> that, okay. But like Bilbo <laughs> hates the, like you can be like, I hate this shit, but like, <laughs> oh my God. go out. But you have to have that point where you're like, I have actually decided to go out and do this. And like, right. he interacts with stuff, like he doesn't like it. Your character doesn't have to like it, but they have right. to like it. This is great. Are we on Lord of the Rings we, now? Because I'm like there. <laughs> well, we had a character yeah. who did an anti anti hero, the vigilante thing. Yeah. And he his his whole story was completely messed up. Like we were going we were trying to protect this city from an invading force. He was from the his normal character was from the country of this invading force, but willing to kind of help us. And then he tried. He tried to pop up as his anti-hero hero guy, who was basically Mexican Batman for some reason. Okay. And so oh, she's like, "I'm gonna. My character's gonna like disappear down this well and come back out as the as the as the anti-hero." And it's like that well leads to nowhere. And it's like a hundred. <laughs> it's a drop. dried out well. Yeah, it was a dried so, out well. It would, be, it would be like kind of obvious if you went down there and someone else came back up. We'd be like. Um, are you the same guy, or were you just hiding in a well for, like, hours on end? <laughs> After that guy committed suicide. And he also insisted on breaking through every possible window for no reason. That is, that is textbook faffing about. That is what that sounds like. And he almost got himself killed when he did introduce us himself. He because he's worse for everybody. Through, he broke through our hotel window. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We didn't know who he was, so we all like just attack him. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> some random dude in a mask breaking through our it's window, <laughs> and then because of it, w one of the attacks misses, which was a dagger throw. Critical goes fumble goes out. Critical fumble goes out the window and kills some random dude on the street, and then he then he yells out the window. It must have been the dagger what? bandit. So that puts the guards on high alert that there's some guy killing people in the town that were trying to be sneaky and do subterfuge in. Oh, good job. Yeah, and that 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 sounds like a sounds like a pain in the butt. Yeah, and then the, for the rest of the game, every time there was like a window, he's like, I break through that window and break out the other one for no reason. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he also he also put the damage. guards of the entire city on alert like twice as much right. as they would have been like really quickly yeah. or screwing up for everybody but okay, no uh, I, I mean like um so like an anti-hero i guess can be played very terribly is what i think the moral of that story is yeah, yeah. that's it's... basically what it looked like was going on like with this with this discussion that i saw yeah, yeah uh, gotta, is the kiddo, is the kiddo okay uh she was being very very naughty and doing some things so she's in timeout for a couple oh. of minutes oh, okay uh, and then she yeah, can hopefully 
hopefully be good again. Yeah, she's being, I think she's being pretty patient. You can tell her, I think she's adorable. She's <laughs> really she awesome. is adorable. She's normally a lot it? more patient. And like... like, my son at four was just like, two wasn't that bad for my oldest, but four was really it hard. Was like, oh, he's my little sister. Like, she, when she was, everybody complains about two, but like, when yeah. she was two, it was like, oh, okay, let's do something else. Oh, we could do this. And she'd be like, I'm two, I don't care, I'm adorable. Yeah. And then, like, at four, she was like, she was like, I am done with your bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> anything that you're going to say to me, there is nothing that you will, that the world will do to get me. To they're like a tiny, that sandwich you had like made. a teenager, right? Yeah. They're like a tiny teenager. They're like a tiny teenager. Like, yeah. like, I remember she'd just say, like, she would say, she would go on these no rampages. I'd be like, Eileen, oh, my God, you just want a million dollars? Where are you? You want to go to Disneyland? And she'd be like, no. And then I'd be like, you want ice cream? No. You want your favorite chocolate <sighs> right here? No. Yeah. I'd be like, I, I, I can't, I can't be left like, alone. I can't no, be left. Like, if it's, it's not okay. one, it's the other. <laughs> <laughs> Today, just it's just away like. And take a deep breath. It's okay. Like, that's what I, <laughs> I have to remind myself. So we kind of jumped ahead to the anti-hero thing. Yes, we jumped ahead to the anti-hero. Um, we did skip we did over like, the gift. Uh, why don't we quickly go over the gift yeah. just because they're interesting because we've yeah. seen them played as races sort of yeah. in other editions. But, yeah. but uh, like the Githyanki <laughs> and the Gisserai. Because they are technically more extra planar anyway. I mean, isn't... <laughs> One of them's in Limbo and the other's in right. the Ethereal Plane. I can't remember. Dang. Man. One of them is in Limbo. The other one is... Do, 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 do. Crap. Got My, video ether, like ethereal it. Astral, I thought it was. I'm not sure. Dang. Well, no. What What is Limbo? I don't remember. I what is Limbo? limbo? One. See, I'm I pretty think good. Get uh, Sarai is Limbo. Uh, okay. Yankee is... Either the ethereal astral plane, uh, which yeah, okay. I mean, I I still like the fact that like they mentioned the Lich Queen here, and I totally have a miniature of the Lich Queen on top of Red Dragon for from the reason, D &D it, miniatures. Still, so for some reason, it doesn't actually tell you the Githy where the Githyanki is. It just it mentions the Githyanki or fortresses within Limbo. It says the Githyanki, brutal Githyanki, or trained at, as, from birth as warriors. It doesn't astral say what sea. They dwell upon the Astral Sea. I was right. The Gith, okay, thank you. Gith Yankee is from the north. I'm going to say <laughs> As opposed to the other Gith, which is... From the south? <laughs> <southern> <laughs> <gentleman>. <laughs> is that saying Is that saying something about us northerners that were chaotic and violent? I mean... It was just the way the, way the guy in the video said Yankee. it. Was like, he, hit the, he hit the Yankee really Yankee. hard. And I was like... As someone just learning about this, I was like, wait, I was like, Yankee, yes, Yankee? <laughs> or, or conversely, conversely, they all bleach their hair blonde <laughs> and wear super long, like, skirts and, like, big jackets. And they're known for being, like, gangsters. Yes. Okay. That's really weird, Audrey. I don't know. <laughs> you, guys know you guys know what I'm referencing at all? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I get I need the super long jackets. I'm not sure where the long skirts come from. <laughs> well, the, it was um in uh the yeah like, to say someone is like Yankee in in Japanese is to describe like a like a delinquent gangster type with like bleached oh. hair. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I got yeah. You. yeah, yeah. 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 See, yeah. like I I knew that was a reference, but I couldn't remember which one it was. And then you're like saying that, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, like, no, that's funny. That's funny. They need it's this kind of feedback. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, but uh, my question is, what about all the other kinds of gifts there are? Well, I want yeah. the like uh, like there's like two other ones that no one ever talks about. What like are they? Like, yes, there are. I didn't know two. Like, um, there's one that's in space because of Spelljammer. I can't remember the name oh. of it. Yes, I I did a video on it on my channel. But it's like in space. I don't remember <laughs> anything ever. So you know, of course I'm not. Okay, we can just call it the Get Spacey. They just uh, kind of like you know. Oh my god! It's actually quite literally called a pirate of Gith. The Gith. Okay. Yeah. Pirate of Gith. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Apparently, I like, like Spacey better. 
apparently Mind Flayers kidnapped, like, the progenitors of the Githyanki and the Gisserai and took them to space with them, because that's a oh. thing. And then they broke free now of the slavery kidnapped... and became their own race. Oh, yeah, I'm only, I'm only seeing those two, okay. I'm not, well, yeah, I can't even find them. They don't have it here, is one of those uh -huh. things, you know, it's like... I yeah, he said love... these are the ones aren't, that aren't mentioned here, but that they, they do exist. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, got I think there's one more, but I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Cause... It's sort of like those 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 MTG novels that like oh my were God. once written but do not exist anymore. <laughs> I read a couple of the really <laughs> the early ones. ones. You can't read anywhere. I actually I have a friend who has them. Fighting fire. I think I have like the novel, the arena novel. And mm -hmm. like another one of those. Uh, yeah, man. Those I need to. I need to call up, call up my friend, and ask if he'll let me borrow his uh -huh. fresh collection. There a lot. Them. Those like really, really early ones. Oh yeah. wow. Anyway, the, the, the thing then, with both of the races they brought in, they're very. They're, there's very different moods to each one. Yeah. Yes. Both GIF have very different moods, and then you have right. the elf who can't decide what mood they're in. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, they're all the moods. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I didn't. I you know neither neither one really jumped out at me. I guess to be honest, but I'm. I'm I, just... I can see spots for them, but the problem is, is like they are very. Their abilities are seem only oddly specific to like certain types of things. I, like. I, well, I would do. Oh, sorry, characters? go ahead. I'm so sorry. Are these these are for player characters? Yeah. Yeah. Be made with. Yeah. Yeah. So, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't mistaken on that front. No, right. no, 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 yeah. Like, um, like. But, I just like I think that maybe having your personality dictated by such distinctive aspects seems a little bit, um, a little bit unappealing when you're making a play when you're making your own character and you want to be able to control all the qualities they possess i i don't know that sure well, it's more of a generalized this is how they kind of are than you have to be this there are gonna you know, your, your gm normally isn't going to be like you have to act exactly like this there are going to be outliers but they're saying like the main race acts in a general way now, the, I think an interesting one would be an Eladrin wild mage. That would be super interesting. <laughs> oh my god. They would be so at the whims of nature and a dice roll. Oh my god. They'd be so ridiculous. It would just be like, something's going on. I'm changing completely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm depressed right now. So my question with the seasonal, the seasonal elf was like a timing issue. Yeah. Like, if y'all are like doing something and like, it's like, summer like who who determines the the season yeah. that well, it's just, like, you know what i'm you know what i'm saying like I, yeah. is it, is it, it the player that's like i'm in summer mode now or yeah. i'm happy okay. or I'm sad. uh so you, it you says that after a summer, short or long yeah. rest well you well, decide what you wake what mood no, you wake that, up that's in, not basically. the mood that's specifically or, for the shifting season for the personality yeah, the season you choose four of them you basically have four personalities based upon the traits that well around the traits that they suggest you know right. you can make up your own and right. it's when they uh, experience powerful emotion they shift oh. so, so like if you become angry you might become a summer and be very like aggressive kind of anger while like if something sad happens you might become winter and then be all like depressed and emo <laughs> okay see, that, see, that, that wasn't like... clear to me because when i was listening i thought it was tied to the the physical season of the yeah it doesn't it... It's not, it's just, the Caesar represents your mood. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Because I think, like, the oh, okay. fa as yeah. I recall from no. the Feywild, it's like the Feywild is actually divided up into season zones, which are always those seasons. So I miss, like, you know, you you always could experience them kind of thing. Oh, um, I see. So, like, if you lived in that, if you lived in the, you know, winter zone of the Feywild, you would always be a dour. You tend to be, like, yeah, in that serious mood, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, no, because I was I was confused about like how that would be, you know, in, when you were like doing something with the group and like whether that you had to be under the influence of the, you know, like the current environmental season. Yeah, the, 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 the Feywild's kind of weird though too, so it's like kind of hard to like actually like, mm -hmm. like hammer it down is the thing. It's like okay. a yeah. weird echo of our own plane with like almost like 
like light and dark too to it also. It, it, well, it, it, taco, is there Taco Bell though? It, there might be. <laughs> it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like stuff from like Laura and Shadow Mo Shadow Mo yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, right, it's, it's hell, like hella confusing. You're like, yeah, what's that? like where am I? Like which yeah. you know part of it am I in? Uh -huh. Well, and isn't it that like time doesn't pass like you can you physically like move from season to season instead of waiting it's for weird. time to change the seasons and mm. it's, yeah it's, well that'll be, I guess it'll be interesting to see how like people handle that that's yeah yeah uh, <laughs> so, does, like so does that to, mean like, do does that very oh, sorry. Thing to make the character. Making the making the character seems like it would either be fun or totally overwhelming, depending on. Okay. Yeah, it could be either way. I think too. The thing is, like, you have to be ready to switch personalities, and that's not easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it'd be I, like playing a little bit of four characters, four, four very similar yeah. characters. Yeah, I feel like it might end up being something that might be detrimental to a gameplay. I mean, I feel like that would lend itself to a so random-esque character that doesn't really have a cohesive mm. what they're following or motivations. I, I think you could play it, though, that right. you're a person who basically is guided by your emotions rather than anything else. Yeah, and that that's a, that's a fun character to play sometimes. But my question is, does that mean in the Feywild, the Winter Zone, everyone's Peter Parker from Spider-Man 3? Probably, though. <laughs> Just walking around being emo, <laughs> and doing weird dances. Yeah. And oh, I watched that, and I was like, it's so, like, uh, it's friends, terrible. So painful i was like oh my god i dated that guy and i'm gonna come over here and just ah. uh, uh, well a little bit of moving on though yeah. because we do yeah. have to continue going is there anything else you want to mention about anti-heroes handbook after we kind of like took a vigilante turn there about talking a little bit about vigilantes i mean that actually kind of covers a little bit of what i wanted to speak about in any way so do we need to hit on that since we kind of tangential went into it anyway I didn't have anything else. Yeah, I mean, the, the only other thing that really is interesting, there's the Blood Ranger bloodline. They added a new one. That's always cool. That's corruption. Um, More stuff on new poisons. New drawbacks, feats, poisons. Cursed items. And, Cursed yeah. items I like. I think that's the only that, thing I'll be interesting to check crazy. out. I, like, that sounds that sounds like the kind of thing that I would want to play. <laughs> I, I really like Rangers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it goes along with the, uh, the Murph. But, Merfolk heart. <laughs> <laughs> the vampire merfolk, uh, like right, ranger. With blood lust, uh, like, uh -huh. but like it's combining my things. It's my merfolk, my theoretical merfolk vampire. Like, yeah. I had a merfolk yes. pirate in a game that started off with someone dropping a dead body into the ocean oh, off a God. ship, and I come back up with the, with the severed head, going, "Not in my ocean." <laughs> I like that. It was such a bad line. It was like we, we like just didn't know how to react in game. We're like, <laughs> what? Yeah, not in my backyard. <laughs> didn't take it back. Well, how would you feel if someone just like randomly dumped the dead body in your yard? We were right outside of a docks that we were escaping with the corpse of a guy trying to murder us who got beheaded. And okay? you dumped his body in my nope. yard. Nobody wants a dead body in their living room, friends. No, you. Look, you the water was a perfect. Good place to clean. Look, that ship had so many people that randomly just showed up on it that, like, so the first two of us that were actually, like, in the first session were like, why were everyone here on the ship? Why, didn't we notice anybody when we got on board? Nope, we're all <laughs> hiding. I was hiding under your ship. There's, like, two people below deck. It was like, wow, really? Wow. Uh, littering up my ocean. I know, littering up my ocean with dead bodies. Take a separate head back. Like, Marvel <laughs> characters that are, are, like, really mad about land people desecrating the ocean are oh, yeah. good, like those. Fuck those land walkers. Yep. Yeah. I had, I had a I had a merfolk that I built that had the travel domain from and it would have had a uh what was it a twenty five land speed I could get up to normally thirty five if I cast the like hours per day spell I had you know <laughs> so I was faster than the dwarf 
It was like, you're so slow. <laughs> I was like, I'm amphibious. I'm fine on land. I could just flip around on my tail. Hello, normal human. I'm just like, I'm just imagining Octodad walking around right now. I'm imagining like a really like fast like magic carp. Uh, like a magic carp is like flopping like really fast. It's like fall down, fall down, fall down, fall down. Well, also in D and D, isn't it? Doesn't an octopus octopus have a faster land speed than a halfling? Same as a halfling in Pathfinder. Or same as a halfling, <laughs> which is kind of sad. Like it. All right. I, well, my next character will be an octopus. Then that sounds great. I'm gonna be a halfling riding riding an octopus. <gasps> can, I, can you? Please? Or it's just like going along on the legs, and you're like, "What is? What is that?" There's a half one. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think I saw that in anime somewhere. Probably. I had from a comedy game we did that could randomly shape shift without much control over it, but he had two wooden fists because he was a monk who had his fists replaced with. Plus, well, or masterwork, masterwork ones, masterwork wooden fists. <laughs> but when he changed into different animals, they would the wood would stay. So I became a stupid foot <laughs> at one point. <laughs> I'm just imagining like a, a, a just animals like trying to <laughs> walk around with wooden fists. That uh, <laughs> reminds me of the uh, the Ixalan. Is it the the ogre orc thing that has a yeah. smoking fist? The did you guys see that one? He has, like, smoke, uh, I think he has I probably noticed that. Yeah. Coming out of both fists. And I was like, wow, like that must be hard to like eat. <laughs> okay. Like, what if you want to have ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> uh so why don't we move on to okay. Dragons Conquer America? Yeah. Which is uh, cool. you know, I guess it's Spanish conquistadors, natives, and dragons. Wow, did I hear I that seems vaguely familiar. I know it does seem vaguely familiar. I think, that, I think that if the natives had dragons, exactly. history would be different, yeah. right? Yeah, I would hope. So, I wanted to. Is it? Are you guys cool if I just read this out of the description? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, um, I thought this was really interesting because I downloaded it. So um, they were talking about the the uh, exploration and like the conquistador thing. So here's what they said: um, as as Spanish developers. We are not outsiders to this matter. Our cultural ancestors were active in the colonization of vast regions of America and other parts of the world. And we couldn't just tell a tale of intrepid conquistadors going from one glorious battle to another. We wanted to do something better. And then it hit us. Why don't we offer our players the chance to live these events from both sides of the clash? Why don't we actively include prejudices such as uh, xenophobia and class struggles into the very fabric of the mechanics? Dude, Dude. that's kind of great. I, th I was that's pretty deep. I, I was like, whoa, that's and I, I mean, yeah. Yeah, from a perspective of like, I think that, you know, gaming and <sighs> the media that we consume teaches us just the same, like, probably even more than what we actively learn in like an educational setting. Yeah. I think that's a really great, a really great opportunity to teach others about the complexities of our historical context. Cause like, I yeah. think a lot of people don't understand the, if no. you don't live, if you don't live in, in a situation where you're affected by oppression, you don't understand the, Con you don't always yeah. understand the context in which absolutely i mean yeah, really you know, and the history history books like that we generally get like you know here in the states are going to gloss over oh, a lot gloss of over so you know much. i mean like it's yeah, yeah i mean it it it's it's a big deal i mean i so i i saw that just and i was really kind of impressed that they included their thought process on that for me i like i for me that gets me interested in the game and i thought that was very heartening you know because historically here you know we we are talking about you know basically a, a genocide and that's that's something that i think that uh deserved at least at least a mention if they're using these motifs in this game so i think i think that was that was nice to see actually well in america we really don't we don't talk about it as much as we ought to because it's still and it still affects people's lives today so it does yeah, I mean, 
and the thing is, you know, history is written by the victor. So, yeah, yeah. You, don't, you, you know, we hide that kind of stuff of, you know, there's still stuff that goes on with Native Americans to this day that are still ve very detrimental. Um, back in the late 90s, there was an oil f oil discovered on one of the reservations and they told them, well, we're going to move you all to a new reservation. This land has oil on it. It's still the property of the United States. And your cho here's a choice it. for you. You can either move to that new reservation or live in the middle of an oil field. Oh, my God. So bad. Well, I mean, we all we all were we all, like the most recent one is Standing Rock. And that that conflict is still ongoing. Um, yeah. And it's, as far it's, as I know, the people need to understand it's like the tip of the iceberg. Like it, this is an ongoing battle that does like that affects, you know, real people's lives, you know, and in a lot of different instances, like like Joe was saying. So I think that in gaming, you know, if, if we're going to borrow some, you know, some history and some, you know, visual tropes. Like it's very, very, um, I mean, I think it's the right thing to do. And I, I think it's admirable to see like this, this kind of um, um, context given for this game, you know? Yeah. And, and that said, the art, the art looks really beautiful, you know? And yeah. I do find it's an interesting way that they look at things. Cause they're looking at it that like, almost like they're taking a history of Europe and changing it just a little bit, like, I, I, it's like Saint George didn't kill the dragon; he tamed it, and made it, a, and made it Catholic, which is kind of like what. And so then, <laughs> like, like, I'm sorry, like that's what he would have if, if dragons, if dragons are actually real and they happen, they they existed. I'm sure that's what somebody would have at least tried yeah. to do back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> and it's sort of like there is a magic, but it's like also intrinsically connected with like religion. So then you have like the Catholic version of it, and then you have like the Aztecs and their, like, what they've been sort of building up in the, you know, in America. And it's kind of interesting that they do have a, a interesting juxtaposition between the two of these. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, religion is great for finding sources of magic, I think, in, in a... I mean, the, you always run into, you don't want to offend actual worshippers yeah. in the real world, but I think that's kind of a... I mean, as a person of faith, I'm actually not that offended by using religion in the context of creating magical sure sure fiction because it's yeah. fiction like for some people for some cares. people it does yeah yeah but the, some people are offended by it but yeah yeah i mean it's i feel like they're using it as a context of being like if magic had existed from the early days what would have it evolved into well yeah. religion became the big thing during this time period so it almost makes sense that like the you know, spirituality and the miracles of religion would become the sources of magic, you know, and each each right. group would have their own version of it then. Well, mm -hmm. and like, I think historically before we had the sciences, people considered religion to be magic and to yeah. be a source of magic. Like if magic mm -hmm. did, a, like, you know, people thought that like, you know, you could, you could pray to a certain deity and have the certain outcome or or do one thing or another and oh. even religious practices there were certain religious practices that you know they were supposed to be holy rites to like cleanse yourself spiritually but they were just like you know ritual baths like prevent disease because you know, yeah i mean i think a big tie-in is like the the faith component right yeah. whether you're you whether it's faith in you know a god or faith in magic or right. faith in a god of magic Yes, yeah. <laughs> I got into fantasy around you know the Dragonlance era. So, <laughs> um, and you know in real life I'm not a religious person, but that appealed to me big time because the 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 faith in magic you know sort of also translated into like a you know a faith in in yourself. I guess yeah, for me was yeah, how I yeah. interpreted it a faith in our you know innate power to create. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That that's a really yeah. good way of putting it. Yeah, and so I think I mean I think like that that component is something that you know like religion, magic, and like um, you know social change like all have in common, and like I, that's something I personally enjoy you know in gaming. Yeah. Just yeah, this like, art looks just like. This is great. I mean, I just downloaded it this morning, and like the it's it's totally free. Yeah. And. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this would be a very interesting. Uh, game just to try out too. I'm considering that maybe I'll do like a one shot and trying out this adventure at least, because mm -hmm. it is a very interesting setting. 
Yeah. And, like, the thing is, it's like, I don't think a lot of people would have thought to have done this kind of interesting turn for this setting, you know? It's sort of... It's a setting that's, like, that's definitely reverberates some of the worst aspect of Europeans, you know, during that time right. period. So it's sort of like... Yeah. You, uh, you, you want to, like... It, it's sort of like you don't want to do a disservice to either end of that. Because it's like the Europeans now, like a lot of them, you know, they're not like that. So you don't want to be like, well, you know, you're like that. And the terrible things did happen to the Mesoamericans. So you don't want to, yes. like... You don't want to like insult that either, so it's sort of like right. just, and it feels like they're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if you don't look at, if you don't learn from history, you're going to repeat it. Yeah. I do like. I mean, oh, sorry, sorry. I, I was going to say I do like you can either use playing cards or dice, and they have systems for both of those. Nice, nice. That's nice. a kind of interesting one because we were talking about a role playing game system that used playing cards in particular. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that last time, and I, I thought the yeah. playing cards was were re was really good for adding variety to the situation and being able to predict yeah. what might be happening in the future, which I, I thought that was cool. I find it interesting you could do both in this one. Yeah, nice. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I really, I like how they're, um, at least at first glance, it looks like they're trying to, um, you know, like, it's difficult to hit that balance of, like, yeah. celebrating, you know, the, in, and elevating, you know, one culture, not celebrating things that are that are really, you know, abhorrent yeah. that, like, actually happen but you know just like word word choice like about the the spanish expedition force here like word choice you know it says this ragtag mercenary group yeah, yeah okay. well that's what they were i mean exactly. we don't talk about them like that we talk about them like oh these heroic travelers for the yeah of society man like God. Yeah, exactly, and it's they like just wanted and, money. And they, mentioned, <laughs> they, just... they mentioned that it's like not it's not a sanctioned group you know, of disciplined soldiers. It's not like, you know, how we look back on it today, but like, here's the, you know, and they're still, you know, they're interesting characters, you know, it's, you know, it looks, you know, you can build a great, you know, a great and interesting story while still, but, but while still like doing the right thing, I think, I mean, and, you know, just who knows, you know, if, we'll see if like, you know, we dig in deeper, but. And it's the introductory adventure is very interesting too because it introduces your characters as sort of people that are in this area that are dealing with Spanish explorers and uh -huh. the locals, you know. So it's sort of like you're neither of them in a way. So I'm interesting, and in, or like you're like a, just a group that's separate. And it's interesting gotcha. you like the entire thing is like you find a stone which turns out to be a dragon egg, mm -hmm. and you know. <laughs> It's yeah, I would, I'd like to find one of those <laughs> yeah, so like, yes, just, in my backyard. Stone that's a dragon egg. Mm -hmm. and I can yeah. just, I'll quit my I'll quit my job and be a yeah. dragon. It, yeah, it's it's supposed to be that like you're just a group of people with no like real allegiance to natives or the Spanish or anybody else, and you're sort of like caught up in this situation, which kind of seems interesting because then you could they suggest like you could have people from either end at that point in time that are just like you know have gotten together, so. I do. Oh yeah, this is colony of Roanoke types like that. Well, that's that that came much later after yeah. that. Historical. Did you see? Did you guys see this? Dragons only accepting women as riders. I saw oh, that. Oh hell yeah! Mm -hmm. It's like changed it. the way society treats them. Yep. Because uh, apparently, like cause apparently Joan of Arc actually won because she was riding on a dragon. You know. Oh. oh okay. Like yeah. It. No, I like that. Mm -hmm. This is really creative. Mm -hmm. It's like little things yeah. like that that seem very interesting in like the 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 history they're building too. Definitely. I, I yeah, I, I definitely agree. And like I mentioned before, like the art looks cool. So like yeah, maybe people should check this out. Wow. Yeah. Well, the and the, I like the use of their visuals of the historical visual style, which is always you know brought around in the fantasy context. Uh -huh. What we tend to do is ignore the way that the world was back then and ignore the cultural context of mm -hmm. that visual style like you're always seeing victorian style things or what have you where like nobody right. has Victoria, victorian like sensibilities or morals they just dress really cool right um, and this is cool. <laughs> exactly. they're adding they ha they're using that visual style but then they're also giving a nod to the historical context and kind yeah. of creating but then creating something new out of all of it so that's really awesome. One yeah. thing I just read that I actually really like too is they actually are lo looking like they are trying to do like injuries and stuff more realistically. Like you can actually get a oh. severed limb that 
out. Will affect your character for the rest of its, you know, existence. Oh, oh dear. Wow. So I, I think, you know, it, it can't be healed. I'm like, yeah. that's all. I mean, I, I think that's kind of cool. You know, most games, it's like, oh, you know, you take damage. They don't really consider, you know, oh, you, you could lose a limb or something. So yeah, I, I yeah. like that the aspect. One game that... that I've played that does that as well is, uh, I think, Apocalypse World. Mm. Um, if you've played it, if anyone's played it, uh, it's uh, you can you can uh, you can have a bad thing happen to your character, like your character gets gravely injured, and instead of dying, you can give them a disfigurement, and so that gives them like a minus on their appearance modifier, pretty much. But that's oh, that's really cool. I like games that do that. It it makes it <laughs> it makes it more interesting um, because then you you have to live with the consequences of your actions if you do something that gets yourself hurt. <laughs> True. Yeah. This is interesting. Prejudice traits. Yeah, that's interesting too. I mean, it's like it makes sense, but it's also like, wow. Yeah. You can. I, you're. They're definitely calling attention to. They're not shying away. That's from the probably topic. a good thing too. They're like, yes, you know, like because like other people have like tolerances and stuff too. It looks like there's like specifically a trait called tolerance. And, you know. This is fascinating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, imperialist, sexist, homophobic, classist, <laughs> you know, you, traditionalist, modernist. That's, that's kind of cool, because I think a lot Racist. of people don't want to admit when they possess those traits, even, and, you know, people... That's true, I guess you have to call your that. character out now, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like uh, your character just might not be, like, there's, like, certain problems with your character you just might have, just saying. Maybe just you just, you know, hope, have hope that they get killed off there. <laughs> <laughs> you won't you feel know. so bad. You're like, oh, that that person was a total, a total. Gee, they gee darn. Was... They should have one that just says asshole. <laughs> <laughs> now they're dead. It's great. Well, I think it's well, like it, it. It seems like you're trying to balance a number of both more positive and negative traits about your character too. It's sort of yeah. like your character, in a way, still might be a good person. It's just you might have certain things about them that, like. Maybe yeah. you you know you're 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 like you don't believe you don't like the other person in particular, but you still like might work with them, like for like yeah. these groups here because sort of like ah you know it's like I would love for you to convert to my religion or something, but whatever you know we get the job done or you know yeah that's a, then it's a, a a teaching moment. I wonder if you can change over like yeah that's my question. If I can change over time or change over the course of the that might be something that's added in because they. They still have other details they haven't added in that they're going to start, like, putting together uh, leading up to when the Kickstarter comes out, which it sounds like they're going to start it in November or something. Mm -hmm. So, like, even this book here that, like, as I've downloaded it, they're like, yeah. we will be adding more to this that you can see as time as we're getting closer to the Kickstarter. You know, it's like, oh, cool. Oh, yeah, that's right. They've got a whole, um, this uh, Mesoamerican religions area and they're like we'll be updating this, that soon before like, yeah, the time the kickstarter yeah. comes out yep published on november 1st which yeah. is the first day of the kickstarter campaign yeah so it looks like they're uh they're working to flesh that out there cool no the, yeah. this this looks like an interesting one i mean if you if you'd like to try it out you can go ahead and check out the the book they have released now um i'll leave a link in the video for when i put this up on my youtube channel uh, I just because that's what I can easily reference because it's downloaded right now. Not as easy to yeah. pull out and you know throw to everybody. For sure. <laughs> but um, all right. Why don't we though move on? I do think I'm gonna skip Whitehall Mysteries until next week because we are running a little late, and I do want to okay. finish up. Um, that's fine. Uh, just because I'm usually terrible with uh, gaming sage advice, why don't we just do a quick stories from the table? And we've got one from you, Audrey. So why don't we get one from you, MJ, yeah, to finish yeah. out the day? And then we'll just yeah. we'll just put out stories uh, or gaming sage advice because uh, if I don't have a question on the top of my head, which I have, I don't have one on the top of my head unless chat can come up with one in five minutes. Go ahead and chat if you've got okay. something. Yeah. <laughs> so sure. all well, the stories I, going. I guess mine is sort of like an, an advice and story like at the same time, but like. I, I you know, I have, I have, you know, two sons and one's seven and one's two and a half. And, you know, the older one's definitely into magic. He enjoys the art. You know, he's interested in what I cosplay. Um, he likes, you know, um, the characters, you know, he does say his favorite uh, 
is Jace. Right. <laughs> so it's like, ow, oh, my heart. <laughs> but um, he also, you know, he likes everybody a little bit. Um, and he has a he has a deck called um, his Shell Speth deck, which is a combination of Elspeth and Kiora. In the deck. <laughs> Shell Speth. And, yeah, get it? Shell Speth. Yeah. <laughs> so he's already making, you know, original characters and stuff. And I, um, I don't have any specific examples, but just in general, like we'll sit down and play with him. And, you know, he'll play by the rules for a while. And then, you know, inevitably he'll get tired and he'll want to do his own his own rules, you know. Um, so sometimes we'll get a few good turns. Sometimes it'll be like first turn and he decides to make up like, you know, a, a, you know, a 50 step combo. And then like, we're dead, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so you never know what you're going to get. And, you know, sometimes it can be frustrating. But I think like... The main thing is that, like, whether it's kids or, like, a new Magic player, you know, it's, you know, just just be, you know, be open-minded and be kind, you know. And, and especially, like, with getting children into the game, it's just, like, foster their creativity and then just kind of just go along, like, with what they want to do. Because it's, like, even though it may seem like some, you know, bullshit to you and you're, like, these mechanics are just, can't we just play a regular game of Magic, you know? Like, I think it's more important for, like, that that kid to be validated like and see that their you know creative energy like you know is worthwhile and like their ideas are cool you know so um that would be my advice and like i i look forward to many more games of like losing losing shell fest <laughs> so yeah that's well, my story <laughs> memories those sweet memories are what what make a fan for life i feel like I think oh. so. He's gonna remember. He's like, I beat down my dad with, you know, this like, like fifty and step combo. I drew my yeah. entire deck and like, you know, shell speth like just smack the living <laughs> out of well, like, out of Spencer, he's you know. Gonna, like, he's gonna Spencer's know. dead. And he is. He's dead. Not real, but that was still so fun, and he let me he let me get away with it because. <laughs> oh yeah! Totally! Totally! Okay. <laughs> That's very nice. Very nice story. All right, why don't we uh, finish up for today? Just because I don't want to go too late, and knowing yeah. us, if we if we really do, if we dive into gaming sage advice, we'll definitely go forever. Yeah, I don't have a question off the top of my head, and chat yeah. has not provided me with one. So, <laughs> all right, so let's move to the end of the show. Uh, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you everybody in chat for uh, you know hanging out with us. Um, why yeah. don't we go around the uh, mm -hmm. sort of area here and give any kind of support you want for yourselves? We'll just go clockwise from uh, from me. So Audrey, go ahead. Oh, okay. So well, you are clockwise from me, you know. <laughs> I, and usually I, I end in Joe like anyway. So it's gonna be um, an adventure. I, I think everybody's screen looks different, but um, oh, it, wait, on the stream, I... on the stream, you're <laughs> clockwise from me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Wait, what am I saying again? Uh, support for yourself. Self you know. Oh, support for myself. Uh, yes. as self promotion. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, I'm still sort of like winding up for. I just I just got finished with PAX and that was just I I just had fun honestly. I didn't really do any cosplay stuff there. I mean I I always wear costumes but I didn't do anything interesting. Um, but I'm excited for the Portland Grand Prix in November. That's kind of my next big event that I'm I'm getting, you know cranked up for uh haven't really finalized all the cosplay plans um i'm always kind of talking with lots of people and i i like to i like to network a lot before i make my final choices um but i'm definitely going to be phage and possibly possibly nissa um i think Nissa that was that the that was the plan i believe um nissa, it can always it, phage nissa i mean it can always change but you know that's yeah. What I am knowing of now, cool. um, and that's really all I've got on my on my ticket for the future. I'm always at you know I'm always at the local Seattle convention, so I'll probably be around Geek Girl Con at least one day. Uh, I'm on Sakura Con staff, so nobody in the public cares about this right now, but stuff's kind of winding up around cool. there. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep. But uh, anytime you uh, follow me on uh, Twitter at Ori Chen and uh, 
Oridesu. 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 Yeah, Oridesu. Oridesu. Yeah. Oridesu. Um, and uh, Facebook at uh, Oridayo Cosplay. Uh, okay. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, MJ. Okay. Um, so I'm MJ Scott. If you um, want to follow me on Twitter, it's at MoxieMTG. Um, thank you for everyone who's here. Thank you for everyone who uh, did not mute me after the election because <laughs> I have plenty of things to say about that. If you're a new follower, be forewarned. You may end up wanting to mute me, but I don't care. I'm going to say it anyway. Um, I uh, One thing we didn't get to like for D&D was... Um, my uh, good accomplices, Cardamajigs, have a new uh, Kickstarter. They have a product out for D&D, um, which is called the, the Deck of Many Flavors. Um, so you might want to check that out. Um, I We didn't really get into talking much flavor text, too, for, I guess... You we'll know, have for to it. have you on again, yeah. then. You it's know an what? excuse. I'll test back. Or, I know. Um, I'll tweet out. I'll, I'll tweet out some cards that I, I wrote for um, for Ixalan, and you guys can like give me feedback there. Just tell me, you know, like yeah, that's the best thing I ever read, you know, or like God, that or tell me it stinks. I don't care. Um, That'd be awesome. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. It was great. And yeah. my cosplay page is Moxie Cosplay on Facebook. I am also on Tumblr at Moxie MTG. I have no Instagram account, so. Fuck Instagram. Not not there. Don't look for me on Instagram. I, I made and... one at an event recently to get a free item. And so I technically have one, but I haven't touched it. Since What's yet. your Instagram, Audrey? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's it's Ori something. It's Ori something. What Ori is something. It's, it's always it, Ori Chan was the original one, but that's <laughs> always taken. So it's like Ori, Ori Daigo or Ori Desu. Or, or... Or like, like, and if, if you speak Japanese, the, the, it's basically just like. It's Ori. <laughs> it's Ori, yo. Like those are all like. Just Wait, short what does Ori, does Ori does Ori mean something by itself? It's my my name um, in Katakana is um, Audrey. Well, my name's Audrey. So my but the o Katakana Odori. 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 Right. Ori is right. the last part of it. So okay. I just turned. It's a it's a short. Oh, so you just put okay. I gotcha. Like Audrey, okay. uh, Audrey in English doesn't shorten very well. Like yeah, it's just, like odd. Or I gotcha. Like none of those sound good, but like Ori sounds kind of cute, so I liked it better. <laughs> no, I got you. I was I was eating a dorayaki earlier. You I know, saw that I, and I think I of it to... as like a dori dori. An, an oriyaki. Doriyaki. Yeah. Oriyaki. I will be at GP Portland if anyone's in the Northwest wants to come out and hang out. I'm going to be in Captain Raska. Yeah. And we also have someone. Um, we also have someone bringing possibly um, Admiral Beckett. Mm. Um, so we should have some pirate and uh, Gorgon action. And I might be able to bring a Chroma, but maybe not. Sorry, if people were looking forward to a Chroma, I might not be able to finish it. Bring a Chroma. Yeah. Um, we should. We should. Are, are we going to do an excellent theme day? Yeah, I, we were supposed. To, we were going to have. We were going to have. Um, Admiral Beckett, Raska, um, and I don't know. Are you doing an Ixalan? You know, I I could. I just have to kind of okay. look at it and figure out what what I feel in my we'll soul. We'll talk about it. We're supposed to have um, you know a chroma uh, a chroma wrath played by Air Bubbles cosplay, and I was supposed to be or no, she's a chroma fury. Sorry, I'm I was supposed to be You're a chroma wrath. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then Audrey here is, is uh, going to be Phage. So. Um, I'll try to get that done and not let my girls down, but you know. I, Plus, I, I just really want to fight Ariel. Like, I just want to like stab her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I think that like for Ixalan, like they 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 have like Castaway Jace, so like maybe we could do like a Castaway Planeswalker or something, something. I don't know. Somebody oh. bring somebody copy copy Sydney, copy. and get the get the Wilson. Uh, the Castaway Planeswalker. Yes, why, why don't we just convince Sydney to come to Portland? I know. I say, I say pouting slightly. I know, right? <laughs> if anybody's out there that's like so young, they haven't seen the movie Castaway, and they don't know what we're talking about with the volleyball. <laughs> so honestly, and, like, Wilson, the I bloody Planeswalker hand symbol. <laughs> Watch Castaway. <laughs> Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Wilson. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Wilson! I, I keep telling people you should all come out to uh, PAX Unplugged. I'll plan nice things if you all want to come out this way to Philly. All right, Philly. I have always wanted to see Philly. It's on it's my excuse. list. Uh -huh. It's an excuse. It's yeah. tabletop packs. Well, I okay. The event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tabletop packs. We got, we got big, big things to plan, you know? Uh -huh. Okay, so GP <laughs> Portland right. and then GP Seattle will be the next big uh, cosplay meetup. So thanks for having me, guys. Yep, okay. And uh, I guess, Joe, you'll be supporting me as you usually do because it's I pimp doing. you because that's what my existence is. <laughs> um... <laughs> Are we doing it? No. Uh, yeah, um... We should have planned that in advance. Like, we could have announced each other. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Treasure of the Lost Legion tomorrow. Uh, we're on schedule for it. I'll let everybody know on Twitter if there's some kind of change in schedule. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Everything else should be normal for the week. Um, yep, that's about it. You know, I think that's the most important thing is the rest of the schedule should be the same for the week. You know, we should be good to and go. And it'll be Treasure of the Lost birthday. It will, yeah. I guess. Have a banging birthday, man. Happy birthday. I'll see how it ends up. You know, it might just be another day. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of end up that way eventually. Uh, if all right. not passed out, it didn't happen. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for a great time. And uh, sorry it went a little later than I was expecting, but it was some great conversations. Okay. You know what happens. Yeah. Uh, I will see you all next. Well, me and Joe will see you next week, and hopefully we can have Audrey and MJ on again at some point in the future for more exciting talk on both Magic and, uh, and role playing games because this is great. You know, some maybe <laughs> actually get some board game talking too. Yeah, <laughs> all yeah right. board games are fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll have to vent about my my hatred of Whitehall Mist. I mean, my dis uh, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to talk about that next time. <laughs> Academic, academic just like yeah, completely have, neutral no, completely neutral opinion but my completely neutral opinion about its existence <laughs> <laughs> uh all right okay everyone thank you for being here bye bye, bye.